Come on and give God a praise offering, everybody. How many people know that he is good? He's faithful. And he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Come on and give him a praise offering. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I just wanted to um, uh, uh, read this letter. It's, it's just such a blessing. And I'm thanking God for who he is. I'm blessed. I am so blessed um, by the Holy Spirit. Amen. It just looked crazy not having Bible study, but every Tuesday we have had a storm. Uh, and it take Wednesday and Thursday to clear it up. <laughs> And it, I just marvel at the Holy Spirit. And I, I said, God, I know, you know, it's just, it is phenomenal. And then every Friday is just beautiful. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is just a wonderful thing, how you move people around here. Amen. Doesn't let you know you just got to be flexible. Amen. You can't be stuck in something. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you got to know that God knows and can see further than yourself. Praise the Lord. That is so wonderful. We are certainly praying with Apostle Joy and Long. They did have to hospitalize her today. And uh, so we want to keep, uh, keep her in our prayers as well as Apostle-elect uh, and Elder Lofton daughter slipped on that uh, black ice and uh, cracked a couple of ribs. So she's expected to have to have surgery tomorrow or Monday. So we want to uh, be praying with them. Amen. That's Nicole. Nicole Ray. Amen. Uh, this, this young man, he says, I'm writing you from this center. And uh, he said, I'm from Chicago. He lived around 76th and Bennett most of his life. He said, I, I've rode past your church many, many times, but I never set foot in there, and it never even crossed my mind, my mistake. But I'm writing to you because your daily devotional booklet has recently greatly affected my life. And it has inspired a multitude of black, white, Hispanic. I received my devotional from my sister. And since I've read and shared its reading with many, quite a few, uh, from the area surrounding your church, many of, of us are long-term offenders. And either we've been incarcerated for many years or we have many years to serve. Some of us will die here in prison and we know it. Me, myself, I've been incarcerated for 20 years now with the possibility of an out date of 2025. Amen. And he says um, for us to pray for him and um, he said I, I wrote you because your devotional booklet has been such an inspiration to me and many. And we look forward to his words every day before we do anything. He said, and I would like to continue to receive the booklet and to continue to build and strengthen my faith in the Lord. And my devotional will uh, expire here soon. <laughs> Amen. He said, you see, we have no chapel, no chapel, a chaplain here at the prison, and we are uh, have to self give uh, uh, our praise to God. Our spiritual growth has to be self-inspired. And the devotional booklets from your church does a great job in helping to achieve that goal. They give me, as well as others, a sense of belonging. We feel as though we're part of Liberty Temple Full Gospel Church. Even though we 
officially aren't. The devotional booklet gives us guidance and strength. Therefore, I humbly ask and request that you send me another devotional booklet, please. And if possible, send me some to share with others at the prison. Your help, concern, and any consideration regarding this matter is hardly receptive. I anxiously, I will anxiously be waiting your response. Amen. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Oh, wait a minute. There's something. So we're going to make sure. I, I, um, Apostle Elect isn't here, so I want to make sure because he said he had written us before. We want to make sure we get the next set of books to them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? Praise the Lord. And uh, I was um, talking to Stephanie Williams. Her mom was uh, in the hospital, and she was telling me how the book has uh, really been a blessing to a lot of people in her on her job and everywhere. And they can't wait till they get the next one. Amen. And I said, well, God, praise Jesus. Amen. God is doing it. His word is going out, and it is being a blessing to so many. And I am so grateful for that and for the Holy Spirit just told me, don't sell it. The Bible say, buy the truth and sell it not. Amen. And so we, we are... Um, our tithes, your tithes and offerings. That's we, how we do that. Amen. And and it's uh, uh, it's just a tremendous blessing to be able to see that word into souls and have people getting free behind bars. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, if they can get free just reading the word, that means we can get free. Reading the word. You don't have to have a bag, hands laid. You can be free if you want to be free. Amen. That's that's what I want to talk about tonight. Amen. We have to free ourselves from experiences that are holding us hostage. That keep us in and out of our emotions. Come on, somebody. Amen. One day you high, next day you so low, next day you crawling, next day you happy. Amen. There is no medium. Praise the Lord. And because when you have terrible experiences, we can sometimes, through our mind, ingest them and swallow them into our stomach and that's why many people are sick with many different diseases praise the lord a, a, a lot of our problems medically is attached to our emotions praise the lord and it's going to take the word of god to get us free the truth will make you free. You don't even have to want to be free. But if you listen to the truth, it will make you free. Come on, somebody. Amen. And, and, and it just let you know that you got to listen with more than your mind. Your heart has to hear the word. Faith uh, comes out of the heart. Amen. And dictates to the mind. Oh, my God. Father, we just bless you and we give you praise. We thank you now, Lord God, for freedom. We thank you, Lord God, for breaking the bondages of every bad experience, every bad memory, every bad incident. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Lord, that we will have freedom in our worship. And freedom in our praise. And freedom in our walk in you. Amen. For in you do we live and we move and we have our being. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. 
Oh, God, we thank you for him. We thank you, Lord, that he leads us and guides us and he teaches us truth in Jesus' name. Come on and give God a praise offering. Amen. I brought the letter because I felt that it was a demonstration that you don't have to have hands laid on you to get free. Amen. And you don't even have to be free to be free. Because your freedom lies in your, your mind, your emotions, your thought life, your spirit, and your soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why Paul talks about our soul. He talks about uh, the transformation that has to occur in our souls, that, that we would be whole, spirit, soul, and body. Why? Because before we were body, soul, and spirit. And our body dictated, uh, he talks about in Romans uh, 7, about the flesh and how the flesh dictates because it wants what it wants. It, and it, it desires what it desires. Come on. And that, you know, you want to do right, but that, that flesh is, has a habit. Come on. That only God can break. And the only way that it can be broken is that you want more of God. Oh, that's good right there. Come on, somebody. Amen. And the more God you want, the freer you can become. Amen. You can't just uh, 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 have uh, the Bible and, and not have a hunger and not have a thirst for righteousness and thirst for wholeness. God, you the one that can make me whole. You can make me better than I was. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm not limited by what my experiences that which have occurred in my life. Praise the Lord. Come on. Y'all going to be with me? I'm not going to be 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Amen. Philippians 4. That's where I want to go. I don't have that much. Just a little. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Version. Philippians 4. Verse 4 through verse 8. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, gladden yourselves in him. Again, I say rejoice. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your, considerate, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near and he's coming soon. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything. But in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants or your requests known to God. Amen. He said, what? And, and, um, and he said, be careful for nothing. In nothing, be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known. In other words, I'm not praying out of my emotion or out of necessity. I'm praying from a grateful heart. I'm praying from a worshiping heart that in, in the midst of what I'm going through, Come on, I know God is able to deliver me. We have to pray like we already know we are already delivered. Come on, amen. And that ought to send the praise up out of you because you glorifying and you magnifying the Lord. Come on, somebody, amen. And you've moved everything out of the way. Come on, come on. And you've moved every bill collector. You moved every no. You moved every threat. My God, you moved everything that's negative from you. Come on, amen, because you know it can be handled. Oh, that's good right there. 
That's good right there. Amen. And I, I, I do a lot of theological reading. And I read a lot of uh, historical uh, material. And uh, it was talking about, I was reading in my morning reading, one of them. <laughs> I was reading about the conscience and consciousness. And we, we hear about uh, the conscience. But one of the things that grabbed me is that the Holy Spirit becomes our conscience. As we're reading the word, he is teaching us and he's inputting or downloading the word of God inside of us so that when we see something in ourselves that's contrary to what's written in the word, Come on, the Holy Spirit will say, you know better than that. Come on. So you, he has absorbed uh, 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 himself or, or made himself a part of our mind. Oh, that's good right there. That's why the Bible says, let this mind. Y'all won't help me. Oh, my God, this is so good. Amen. This is how you get peace. That passes understanding. This is why you can have peace in the midst of your storms. And you can still praise him. And you can still worship him. And you can still get your deliverance. Say this deliverance night. Amen. So he said uh, uh, but, uh, if, if, if there is any virtue. Uh, he said in, in verse 7. And God's peace shall be yours. That it might not, it is not might be, but that word says shall be. Oh, my God. Amen. Isn't it something you can go through something and have such a peace? Amen. Oh, God, I love you. When you have the peace of God, it commands the atmosphere. And it doesn't matter who is involved. Y'all won't help me. Amen. They have to fall in line with the atmosphere that you created in the room. Because God is powerful. Come on. Amen. And the Holy Spirit in you. Say the Holy Spirit in me will command every demon to shut up. You don't have to get ignorant. You don't have to get ugly. You ain't got to go back to your old self. Yeah, this is good. It, it takes maturity to get to that. Oh, my God. Amen. Amen. It takes you some, some time to... To get there, but once you get settled in the Holy Ghost, oh my God, you know He's in charge. You know He's in control. Come on. Amen. And so when you do that, Paul says, and God's peace shall be yours. You got needs, but you got peace. You got circumstances and situations going on in your life. And they will try to govern you. How, how will they govern me? They'll help me up all night. They'll help me worry. They'll help me talking to myself. They'll help me asking God, why is this happening to me? They'll help me feeling sorry for myself. They'll help me going back to the old day. See, I knew I, I help everybody. Nobody helped me. I gave to everybody. Nobody. Come on, somebody. But he said, let your consideration. Amen. It's not about how good people are to you. It's how good you can be to people. It ain't about what you're receiving from people. It's what you're giving to people. Jesus said it's better to give than to receive. This is good right here. Amen. Because it, Paul has a formula for keeping our mind free. And the way we keep our mind free is putting God in front of us. Amen. The way we get our salvation, the way we have our wholeness, the way uh, uh, your blood pressure, come on. Amen. See, when I, when I was, 
out of myself every time I go to the doctor, my pressure was up. But when I start receding and saying, Holy Ghost, you're going to have to deal with this. Then I go and he said, you know what? We're almost going to take you off of this. A little more weight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What is it? Number one, I'm taking better care of my body. Number two, I'm exercising. And I'm eating properly. Come on, somebody. I'm, I am cooperating with my system. Oh, God. And then I'm cooperating with the word of God. Come on, somebody. Say, God is good. Amen. So, uh, um, it doesn't matter how bad you've had it and how rough it's been and how rough it is. You can make it. You're going to come through. You can go through the floods. You can go through the fire. You can <laughs> Amen. So, he says, it shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul not the mind that so hurts are deeper than my thought life they are soulish that's why we're bound to them and in bondage to them I'm, I'm going somewhere amen got 15 more minutes he said, of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever it is, whatever kind, whatever, and wisdom, and, your, and uh, gracious, if it be any virtue, and excellence. If there is anything worthy of praise, think and weigh and take account these things. Fix your mind on these things. How good God is that he saved us. How good he included us. He could have just said, said it's just about Israel and all the rest of the world is, is whatever. But he saved us. Come on. Amen. And this is why when we allow bad incidents and uh, misery, memories, a state of experience in the now or past, we are already declaring how it's going to be in the future. Because if I don't have freedom now, I cannot have freedom in the future. That's deep right there. Amen. I want to say that a bound mind is a mind that's limited. And it's restrained. And it's confined. Amen. And it's made fast by a band of chains. That the devil takes such a, a stronghold position in your life to control you. To make you not believe, make you not trust, make you have, be fearful of who God is and that God is your deliverer. And this is why many times people come and get delivered and delivered and delivered because they don't believe they free, they're free when they leave the altar. Why? Because they didn't hear the word. And when you don't hear the word in your heart, because it's your heart that's going to make you free from every soulish experience, every experience that we've had in our lives, it's going to be the word of God that makes us free. Amen? With the heart, 
man believes unto righteousness. Amen. So uh, God, Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Buying means to attach, to fasten, to control. So many times you might, you, you might say, have you ever said, I don't know why I'm acting like this. Have you ever said, this ain't me? You detach from it, but you acting it out anyway. Why? Because it's the real, real part of who you are. Bow. Is that something? Say, I'm be free tonight. Amen. Let's look at Matthew the 16th chapter. Okay. And I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be what? Amen. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was what? Amen. But Jesus said, whatsoever you what? Bind on earth is bound in what? And whatsoever is what? Loosed on earth. Amen. So look, whatever is bound in earth is also bound in heaven because we've been instructed to unbound. Whatever is loose, we've been instructed to loose it. And if we don't do it, come on, it's, it means it stays in our lives. And we pass it down to our children and our children's children. Those inhibitions, those fears. Amen. The Bible said faith refuses. Now, this is what I said. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I got this. I wrote myself a note. Hebrews 11 and 1 say, now faith is the substance of things what? And the what? Of things Amen. And so this is what I say, because the Bible tells us without faith, it's impossible. So if I don't pray in faith, come on, I can't get anything I ask for. I can't receive that which I think I need. Come on, I can't knock because it ain't no door open. Because what? This is what I wrote. Faith refuses to accept discouragement, failure, and unbelief. Amen. So instead of uh, being bound, we need to release. Instead of uh, 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 being retained, we need to release our cares. Because why? All of these things are making us weak. It's making the church weak. We're weak physically. We're weak emotionally, we're weak spiritually, we're uh, weak naturally. That's why we lash out at each other instead of loving each other. Praise the Lord. The keys, Matthew 18 and 18. Are y'all with me, right? This is my own personal Bible study. Okay. <laughs> Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever what you loose on earth shall be what. And then this is what he adds that's not over uh, uh, in, in ch uh, ch chapter 16. He says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done of them of my father, what? For where two or three 
are gathered together in my name. Come on. There, I, there am I in the midst of them. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. So then Peter said, well, how often do I forgive my brother? You keep on forgiving. Why? Because it's a key to your freedom. Amen. Who you release shall be released. Let's go to John. Y'all with me right here? Say it's time to let go of everyone and everything that would try to bind me. I don't have any influence when I'm the one bound. I have no spiritual authority when I'm bound myself because I'm going to be praying through legalism and judgment. It's dangerous. That's why you need the word to make you free. Praise the Lord. It's good right here. It say it's good right here. Amen. My last my last thing. For real. I didn't say that before, but I'm saying it now. Acts 14. I'm finna give an example of freedom of the word. So if you if you don't come if if you came down here and you don't throw up in the bag, that don't mean you're not free. Jesus didn't touch everyone he healed. He didn't use the same method to heal everybody. But one thing he did touch is everyone's soul. And they were whole. That's how you know you delivered. When your soul has been touched. That's powerful. Amen. So check this out. Paul is uh, preaching. This is good. Acts the 14th chapter. Everybody with me? Amen. Everybody hearing what I'm saying? And when there was an assault made both on the of, of the uh, Gentiles and also the Jews with the rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them because they were preaching. They were uh, aware of it and fled to Lystra and Derby cities in Lycon uh, Lycon Lycaonia and, say, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they what? And there they what? Now remember, they don't have Bibles. They don't have Bibles. They got the law. This is good right here. Amen. They got the word of God. Amen. And there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. The same heard what? who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Paul could see he was receiving the word. He was, he was on the edge of his seat. It was like, it was like the word was coming and drawing, uh, drawing him in. Come on. And, and he believed what Paul was saying about Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. And said, with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. Paul didn't touch him with a handkerchief. He didn't have to. Why? Because his faith agreed with the faith that was coming out of Paul's mouth. And they were agreeing as
Come on. The word is powerful. Amen. And so uh, uh, he was impotent. He was weak. He was uh, limping. But hear, hearing the word, hearing the word, the word made him whole. Come on. Just because he received it. Come on. He received Jesus as the healer. He received the blood. Come on. He received the resurrection. He received what Paul's experience was. Come on. And he believed what he said. And the Bible say, and Paul proceeded. That's good. It's something when the preacher can perceive that you get it. Come on, that's how you know that healing has been activated in the atmosphere because somebody has received the word and know, well, you know what? This little pain I got, I can be healed. I, I can be physically healed. I can be spiritually healed. My soul, my, uh, 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 my mind, uh, everything in me. I do not have to leave this place sick. Come on, somebody. All you got to do is elevate your faith and that God's word is true. That he still heals. That he still delivers. That he still makes us free. Come on, all you got to do is get rid of all the inhibitions, all the anxiousness. Come on, amen. All you got to do is get rid of those things. Come on, and healing is yours. The price has already been paid. You don't have to go to the cross. The blood is already on you. All you have to do is receive it. All you have to do is receive it. I receive it. I receive my healing. I am healed. Come on. I'm healed because God said I'm healed. I'm delivered because God said I'm delivered. Come on, I'm free because God said I'm free. Come on, somebody. I'm free from the past. I'm free from the bondages of the past. I'm free from my own mistakes. Y'all won't help me. And I'm free from the mistakes that people made in my life. Oh, y'all won't help me. Woo! Come on. Hallelujah. God is so good that he does not want us to be weighed down with sin. He does not want us to be weighed down with all those issues that are keeping us from progressing as children of God. Y'all want me? Come on. Say, we're going to do better. Amen, because we know that God is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a present help in the time of trouble. If you call on him, he say he'll answer. And he'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Come on, somebody. Amen. He say, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Y'all won't help me. They're going to mount up with wings of eagles. They're going to run and not get weary. They're going to walk and not faint. Come on. The word of God just builds us up. Come on. Until we get into a place where we receive that wholeness, where we receive our healing, where we receive our deliverance. He say, if you call on me, I'll deliver you. Come on, somebody. If you call on me, believe in me and believe what I said and believe the prophet. And so shall ye what? Come on and give God a praise offering up in here. <laughs> 